Hello there, boys and girls. Lords, ladies and gentlemen, and Kate Middleton, hey, whoever's watching. It's that time of the week. The great and glorious, soon to be famous one Andy Dutch, back on the camera again for another delightful tarot show. That's right, on this YouTube channel, I do tarot readings. Now, we're going to crack straight on with the show, but before we do, same as is traditional, okay? few quick announcements, a few quick reminders, and then straight on with the whole thing. we got a massive backlog of stuff coming through. This show is getting really popular, so I'm going to try and do the readings a little quicker anyway. And we'll try and just see basically what can happen. Alright, now first and foremost, I'm looking to get some people working for me. That's right, it could be you out there, it doesn't matter what country you're in, more or less, okay? As long as you can speak English, you're a good communicator, you've got a genuine interest in supernatural, psychic, tarot stuff, you want to be able to help people, there's going to be a link down there for a website that you can register on, and even if you're working as a, you know, inverted commas expert on other services as well, then you can always incorporate this into your methodology some way or another, okay? What you have to do is just send me through an email via the link which is on the website, include the information which is requested, and basically, you know, I'll get you set up with an account, and then you can promote your own listing, via YouTube or anything else out there, okay, just like I do, and see, you know, how how this still sort of thing works for yourself. The more the merrier, okay, there's no limit on the number of people who can work for me, commission rates are excellent, okay. So, the other thing is, of course, this service, like all other psychic services, is and should be regarded as being an entertainment service. Now, that's for a very good ethical reason, and that is that you personally are still in charge of your life. You're the producer, you're the director, and all the rest of that of your own life, the movie of your life, and you are the superstar. So don't forget that, and don't let any reader take that away from you under any circumstances. Now, how do I do this show? Well, firstly, I've got no scripts. Secondly, I've got no preparation whatsoever. This is all completely and utterly off the cuff. The closest thing you can get to live entertainment, okay, here on YouTube, all right? I don't even know the inquiries which are out there ready and waiting for me on the computer at the moment. I have no idea what they're about. So, you know, this is completely blind, no preparation, no rehearsal, no nothing. All right, and whatever comes out from the reading, which I'll be showing you, either if you're holding the cards up to the camera, and basically like that, you'll notice that the focus of the camera has been changed so you can see the detail on the cards. That's a good one, by the way, okay? Very positive, all right? Uh, and I'll also be once in a while, you know, showing you the cards which come out on the table, if I see fit, depending upon what comes through in the actual readings themselves. So, here we go. This is going to be great fun. We're going to have, like, live music and dancing and singing and great meals and champagne. Well, actually, we're not. You just can sit down and... <laughs> well, you can have a great meal if you want. You can have champagne if you want. I'm not going to stop you, but I'm just going to get straight on with the Tower Show. So, here we go with the first inquiry. Okay, Moon Ghost, you're the first one of today. I think you were part of the backlog of the previous week's show. Uh, you've got an inquiry about your job. Let's have a quick look and see basically what's coming through here. See if there's any signs of, you know, this, that, and the other occurring. As is traditional, I'm shuffling like a lunatic. Often when you can't see my hands, I'm not doing anything naughty. I'm just giving the cards a quick shuffle. Okay, actually a very thorough shuffle to make sure everything's nice and random. Or whatever's going to come out is going to come out up to the chaos theory, forces in the universe, and basically whatever is out there, which makes this stuff be quite as cool as it can be. So for this one, we can do a chronological reading, which can have a quick look over a period of time and see what kind of things are happening there. Now, one of the things you mentioned in your private message was, are you your own worst enemy? Hmm. I think it's a little more difficult than that. Okay, this is a six card spread, and I'm going to show you the cards. First two. Some happiness associated with it. We've got some cup signs there. The cup signs are reversed, showing a bit of self-doubt. And also a sense of uh, some female individual around you in the workplace may not necessarily be very positive towards you. Don't worry about that too much. The only other signs we got there is maybe... You do make things worse for yourself. Maybe that's a question of attitude or the attitude which you portray there. Okay, the Ten of Swords, the way I see it, can often mean some forms of negativity, but it can also mean some forms of communication skill improvement, which you have to do to try and make things work out better for yourself. Okay, it can be an optimistic sign on the basis that you realize basically what's really happening there and what could actually occur. So on one side of things, yes, I feel there are some negative people around you who do seem to have some kind of, you know, wanting to stab you in the back, feeling a bit of competition in the workplace, that 
sort of thing, the kind of things that the top brass might consider to be a good thing, but for all the rest of us, you know, people, I've been there before myself, I know what it's like, I've been in, uh, one of the largest companies I worked with had about 2,500 employees in the UK alone, and, you know, they were a Europe-wide company, and so, you know, it was, a, it was a massive affair, and there was all kinds of stuff going on under the surface, so I know what you're talking about there. You've got to try and see each and every single situation as if you are taking another job interview, basically, and be the best you can be, dress the best you can, and be the happy, giggly, bubbly, fun-loving, entertaining person in the workplace, as well as trying to solve the problems which are around you. It can be very hard, it can be very draining, but I believe you can do that. Now, why do I believe you can do that? On the strength of the rest of the reading. Moving on to the next part of the reading, okay? You've probably seen that before. Yes, it did come out reverse, but I don't feel, you know, I don't feel up here that that's actually too significant to the situation in question because it does speak about something alchemical, turning something negative into something positive. And then we've got more signs of happiness coming through, okay? Very strong sense of there being some positives being drawn out of the negatives. Maybe there's other people who you can say a few things about, not to stab them in the back, but just to point out where their shortfalls are. You're, you seem to me to be quite a good individual, but sometimes you can be rather reserved and rather polite. Okay, if you're in the world of work, in the world of business, then that doesn't always work for you. Sometimes you've got to um, use your social skills in a positive way and express a good message to make sure that you're protecting your back, as well as making sure that the higher up people know basically the mistakes that other people are making, so long as you can back it up. Okay, that's basically one of the things you've got to learn when you're, you know, in a serious environment. But essentially, turning something negative into something positive is there for you. It's not immediate, it's going to happen. Um, the here and now and the very short term future is still a bit sticky, so you just got to break on through it. Okay, now the very long term future signs. Now, this is what I find is really most interesting because we've got these repeated motifs going through the whole reading, and those are cup signs, very strong cup signs there. Essentially, that's a very positive female energy, and it's, you know, it's upright and it's actually being supportive of you. You've got friends there, you've got supporters there, but they just don't talk about it to your face. You've got to learn to highlight who these people are and get close to them, okay? Bring your, your friends close, but your enemies closer if you get in the drift, okay? There was a reason that was mentioned in the Godfather film, and it wasn't just for the organized crime fraternity. I'm telling you that, Laura, you know, straight out. And the next signs I've got, although this is a female energy, it doesn't matter what gender you are, this is relating to yourself, further on down the line. It's an earth sign, what the worst signs talk about, things of a practical, down-to-earth nature, okay? It's talking about wealth of a certain type, but very balanced and accumulated as a result of wisdom and knowledge. So, I think it's worthwhile trying to see this particular period in your life as being a time of extra education about how this particular working environment is working. Study it, think about it. You don't have to dwell upon it, but you do have to be more analytical, sort of like stepping out of the situation, mentally speaking, not when you're there, but you know, at the end of the day, learn to think about it in an objective manner. Maybe write down all the problems you've got on a piece of paper, come back to it the next day. I have recommended this method for different situations. You can use it with the same situation and look at it as if it was written by somebody else. Okay, and then try and creatively think about the problems that you've got. It's a very cl clever and very powerful method, and I would strongly recommend to anyone out there that no matter what your situation, no matter what your problem, you try and use that, whether it's a relationship problem, family problem, divorce problem, whether it's to do with, you know, whatever, or whether it's something else that you think you're doing wrong, and so on and so forth. Write stuff down, um, rigorously, honestly, and then come back to it the next day and read it as if somebody else had written it. That would really help you, okay? Bear that in mind. Okay, Kuki Mukis, you ask whether you know your existing, you know, your future partner, so to speak, already. Hmm. When someone asks me a question like that, I automatically start thinking to myself, okay, does this individual wish me to read upon one particular individual? My impression would be that you do, which is you haven't given me their name. Maybe there's a feeling of attraction associated with an individual. And we can see basically what the reading says about that. So I'm going to read this on the basis that there is one particular individual that you are thinking of. And I think you know already who that person is. And we'll see what kind of thoughts, feelings, moods, energies, and all the rest of that appear. We've done one chronological reading. Now we're moving on to the eight card relationship reading, which I've shown you in more detail in the previous video. So we're just going to go into this bit by bit. Okay, let's have a quick look and see what's coming through here for you. Okay, hmm. Starting with the first five cards. Problems. Um, that's the way I'm seeing it, okay? Not a negative reading, don't get me wrong there, when I expand it into the future part of the reading, we got some very strong romantic signs there, and we got some very strong loving signs associated with the same individual, but with a different, like, scenario in the background, something's changed, something's moved on, something's more open. So, 
if I was to start with the here and now part of the reading, let's do that. Okay, I'm, I'm racing ahead of myself. I know I shouldn't do that. I want to try and keep it nice and structured for you. Forces in between the two of you not looking good at all, okay? Uh, five of Swords, a sense of a feeling of defeat, uh, an obstacle, a block of something getting in the way. Although this is someone you might possibly have some kind of communication with of some description, but it's not quite working out according to plan. Signs on their side of things, this is where the obstacle is, it's on their side of things, okay? They've got issues of powerlessness, they're too busy focusing on the material, they're trying to sort out some other issues. It could be that they're with somebody else and there's some kind of financial, financial issues associated with them. Or it could be an emotional issue because the Devil card is often regarded as being an emotional sign by a lot of people. So internal issues, external issues, jumping to conclusions and not really being able to recognize quite as much as they should be able to about the potential and therefore not quite taking the action. Hence the sense of defeat in the here and now. But this is still the here and now part of the reading. So, you know, what's changing, what's happening, what's really moving this whole thing further forward and how on earth um, you know can you actually be happy in the longer term future signs of your side of things this is like a classic eight card relationship situation okay because strange stuff on their side of things interesting stuff on your side of things okay cup signs sense of affection we've had this one come out before i think uh but essentially the feeling there is that of empathy a sense of you know recognizing their energy when when they're not around that kind of thing and also a sense of something clear-headed about this, almost as if you know, not only intuitively, but you've also been thinking, well, if this individual could actually be mine, it could actually work out well, because I know something about them already. That's what I'm seeing there, that's the way I'm feeling it. The positive signs are on your side of things, the obstacles are on their side of things. That's basically, you know, what's really going on there. Progression, short-term, mid-term, and long-term future, as is traditional with the eight-card relationship reading. Here we go, short-term future, the moon card. That's already speaking about romance, but also something hidden, something obscured, something taken away from the current situation. There's more to be learned, and that's going to require a lot of creative thinking on your side of things to overcome that. But the opportunity of bumping into each other, I just got a mental image there of you two literally bumping into each other, uh, and basically using that as an opportunity to sort of sort things out. Honestly, if you like, it feels to me almost like a work situation. I'm not quite sure why but I just saw like you carrying like a stack of books or files and then literally bumping into him and dropping something and he helps you pick it up or something along those lines okay progression more love signs but also a still a sense of not quite getting there so this individual whoever this is is somebody who's not always very good at doing the next right thing and you'll find that out later on it's going to get better it's going to get worse and then it's going to get better again it's going to require skill it's going to require perseverance and clear perception for you to basically get what you want from this individual. So it's not necessarily the easiest situation in the whole wide world. You did ask me what else is coming down the line for you in your life in general. That will require a Celtic Cross spread reading. You can ask me more about that in the subsequent reading. I'll go straight on to the next one. Back in a second. Clovis on one. You want me to call you Clovis on one? So that's what I'll do. Okay. Big complex situation with yourself right now. Let's have a quick look and see what kind of thoughts, feelings, moods, energies, and all the rest of that are going to appear for you. Let's have a quick look. Okay, again, eight card relationship reading, you're going through a divorce and so on and so forth. Let's just have a quick peek and see what's coming on through here for you. Okay, you ask, would he get the help he needs? I've shuffled very thoroughly, but here we go. The moon card has yet again come out. He doesn't know what's wrong with him yet. He just doesn't know that yet. That's for the here and now, he's still trying to get a bit of further awareness. Then why has he got signs of self-actualization? He believes he's right. He's going to be a stubborn cuss for a while. You've just got to accept that. The here and now is not looking good. Okay, force between the two of you. There is still love there. He still has affection for you, strong affection. But all the pain is on your side of the reading. We only ever hurt th those we love and some of it's on your side of things. Why have we got this card coming out here on your side of things? Again, I've shuffled out very thoroughly. This one came out in the previous reading. So what's going on through there? Hmm... And why is it turned up reversed? It's like, you know what to do. You've been trying to do it. It hasn't been well received. It feels bad. And also the hangman reverse. Now, if it was upright, I'd say fear of treachery, standard message with the hangman um, part of the reading. But in this particular case, it's the other way around, speaking of hope. You already know there's something potentially good happening here. You are the hope in this particular situation. The quality of help which he needs is going to be very big and very deep and very long-lasting, okay? It's, going to, it's not going to be an overnight situation. Let's have a quick look at short-term, mid-term, and long-term and see basically what's coming out there. All right, okay. 
Mid-term future signs as far as him sorting out the problem is concerned. That's the best sign, planning and preparation for the future. That's thought, compassion, understanding. It's the science card. It's the six of swords. It's a very, very good, but it's not there yet. Now, will this be able to be repaired before it gets too late? I don't think so. I think it's going to get too late, I think you're going to have your divorce, it's going to be messy. When there's a feeling of freedom, okay, a sense of mental clarity has descended on both you and him, then he'll be able to start thinking, oh my word, it was my problem all along. And that's why in the long term future, we got the spiritual sense of connection between you and him. It's got to get worse before it gets better, that's my impression. Okay, short term future, you've seen this one before in previous readings, the strength card, the nine of staves often referring to communication, it's got a sun and a moon on it, which I often regard as being a, a reflection about balance between like a, aggression and, and tranquility, okay? And in this particular case, you've been the tranquil one, you've been trying to be assertive, you've been trying to like say, this is what I need, this is what I want, but he's not basically been on cloud cuckoo land, it's been very, very difficult. So, something's going to happen, I don't know whether he's been drinking or what, there's something very peculiar there, I mean that could be another message of the moon card on his side of things, because like, there's so many different associations with each and every single card, if you get my drift it depends upon the circumstances, and what I'm getting up here basically, you know, it's, it's difficult. Alright, um, now, is there a possibility I could be wrong here and there could be a change sooner? Well, the strength card also talks about moral strength and moral fiber. That also speaks about using communication to try and bring about a stronger situation. So potentially, yes, all that could be happening within three months from now. Um, but it feels to me as if you're, you know, it, 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 you're hanging on. You're hanging on there. So I'm sorry I couldn't turn around to you and say everything's going to be rosy. But, you know, what I do with my readings, I just tell you what I see here. That's it. Okay, sometimes good, sometimes bad, sometimes, sometimes difficult. But I think you already know. The, this is not like your standard situation between yourself and somebody else, okay? This is like difficult. So be the best you can be and be, be the strength. Rock Angel! Hi there, how the heck's it going? You're not a fan of the band Lordy, are you? <laughs> Alright, you want to know about Neil to see whether like it's going to work out okay and according to plan. Let's have a quick look. Once again, the 8 card relationship reading. We'll see what we can do. Obviously, sometimes I can't answer every single question because like I've got loads coming through. The tarot show is getting popular. I just want to do the best I can do for absolutely everybody out there. Spread the love broadly, you know what I mean? Uh, there's going to be a backlog after this show, but the backlogs are good because they keep me, you know, it means I've got a show to do every single week, you know what I mean? Sometimes I take a bit of time off, but I have to, okay? That's that's for me and for my benefit because, like, you know, live the spirituality that I'm preaching if you get my drift. Okay. Weird. Weird is the first word. Not bad, okay? Not bad, not negative, but weird. Alright, now at the very beginning of the show I said that this was a good card. This also represents the forces between the two of you, which represents something about the connection, okay, which is about to change. He's oblivious. Alright, he's got affection for you without the shadow of a doubt. We've got cup signs there, but this particular one here often represents a sense of uh, being held back, almost like he's walking through treacle, okay? That can be very good and very romantic, but it can also be very difficult speaking about slow progress. And he's got to wake up to the fact that there could well be more happening in the whole relationship. Also on his side of things, um, he's already struggled in life, okay? Not just in relationships, but in life itself. He's got a lot of knowledge, but not necessarily the perception, okay? We've got some good signs associated with some ability to work out what's wrong there, but his slow, sluggish change. You're going to start to see change in the way in which he'll actually be behaving. Uh, and there's some importance to your in involvement in his life. There's some importance there. I can't quite see precisely what it is. You both see life in slightly different ways, and that's got the ability to really make things interesting and hot up. On your side of things, you're the strength and stability, you're concerned about potential interference, standard situation, okay? But you are the strength and stability there. You've done your growing, you've worked out where things have been wrong, and you've started to get the clarity on his side of things. I think he's still like plowing through a bit of stuff. And that's why the short-term future, good communication signs, but also looking rather tricky. Always look at the colors. If you're training yourself to be a reader, look at the colors. That tells a story in its own right. Why in a relationship reading would we have like, um, so, well, literally cruelty, as it says at the bottom there, but a sense of there being something negative, okay? It's Saturnian imagery. There's a sense of frustration, powerlessness. You're gonna, you personally are gonna become much more aware of all of the forces which drive him. And there's gonna be some kind of like negativity about that, okay? But on the other hand, don't worry because this is still looking good. Here we go. Projection. 
mid-term and long-term future, okay? Your mid-term future signs, it's reversed, but on the other hand, it's still talking about a touch of defensiveness on his side of things. Now, that's a great progression from those signs relating to negativity, cruelty, powerlessness, irritability, and all the rest of that. And then further on from there, we got some very positive signs. A slow developing gradual relationship. Now, slow developing relationships are very good. Very good. Okay, you know what they mean? They mean that you can grow together. We all want to have that, like, final, you know... Why aren't they, you know, why aren't they doing it? Why aren't they, like, opening up, coming forward, saying the things that I want them to say? Because people don't say what you want them to say. They say what they, say what they need to say at the time. Sometimes good, sometimes bad, okay? But there's some feeling of some importance here and some potential development. This is a positive reading, but it's not a quick developer, okay? One monster girl, hello, okay? Another eight-card relationship reading coming up for you, okay? Get them while they're hot. Yeah, red hot tarot readings coming right up. Yeah, baby. Steamy. Well, maybe it is, maybe it is. We'll have to see what the reading says, won't we? As I said before, I don't prime the readings. Whatever comes out, that's what you get, okay? Uh, and that's just the way that things are. So let's just have a quick look to see what the reading says. Force between the two of you, strength, stability. He, this looks like a friendship connection to me. This looks like it feels like a friendship connection, but on your side of things, you feel you could turn his world upside down in a positive way. Bit of a bolt from the blue when he came into your life. There's a sense of something good happening there. You are very nurturing. You, okay, you're not necessarily the stability in a future relationship because the stability is the relationship or the connection between the two of you, but you are the nurturing one, okay? You're the one who wants to look after to men. That's where your loving streak comes from. And, you know, I'm just getting this image of you wanting just to put your arms around him and just get to give him this wonderful hug because it's all heart chakra stuff okay beautiful pastel colors always look at the colors pastel colors celebrating your femininity and of course your desire to defend to protect to inspire that's what's coming through his side of the reading hmm, slightly different message again shuffled like a lunatic and what do we get the six of swords again why is this happening quite so much okay He's a very intellectual individual, and he finds it difficult to feel things emotionally speaking, but he's learning to get the balance right, and I feel he can see that there is something between you and him. That's why we've got watery colors, watery imagery. There is a bit of a cup motif about this card. If you think about it carefully, okay, there's all kinds of subtle meanings associated with the tarot cards, and you've got to bear that in mind if you want to be a good reader. This is why I like the Thoth Tarot. It's very inspiring, very hmm, <clears throat> energetic power, you know what I mean? It's not because it's like the most advanced deck in the world. In fact, it's the least advanced deck in the world because the colors and the symbols and all the rest of it tells such a story. It's beautiful. Okay, short-term future. Very nice connection within three months. This is a faster developing for a relationship. This is someone who's thinking about you, but they're still learning what love is. Okay, again... Why, why is this happening quite so much? I shuffle like a lunatic and we get the same card coming out. Trying to get the balance right. We had signs of balance on his side of things. You are an instructor to him, okay? This is another reason why, they, you know, this is a complex situation. But we got one very interesting love sign coming through further on down the line. Now, why would I associate the Hierophant with love? Because this is, in this particular case, it symbolizes being able to sit around the the table and discuss important issues in the best relationship in the whole wide world you, sometimes you have to say look can we talk you're going to be able to with this individual all right and that's coming from the positivity from his analytical side because he wants to be able to uh, think and to discuss sometimes he can think himself under the table but that's not necessarily what I'm feeling here to the most parts it's actually quite a celebratory energy that I'm getting there in the longer term future so it's going to pick up, it's going to get intelligent, so you got good stuff. Jasmine Nick 33 congratulations on getting married. I think that's the most wonderful thing that one can hear, especially me as a reader. You know, I love to hear it when people out there are just like sorting out their lives and sort of settling down and getting everything happening. And marriages are the most beautiful ceremonies in the whole wide world. I've been to a fair few of them myself. I haven't had one for myself yet, but one of these days it's going to happen. I know it. And the energy here, let's just have a quick look for yourself and your partner. And, you know, this is the season really, isn't it? This is the ideal season to get married. All the old, you know, earth worship symbolism of this time of the year of, you know, the blossom and like nature doing what nature does. If you get my drift, you know, look forward to the honeymoon. You know, in the old days they drank mead. 
mead, the honey drink. That's where we get the phrase honeymoon from. And so what they would do throughout a, an extended period of time of a fair few weeks, they would drink mead every single day. I personally would have thought that would ruin relationships, but apparently it helped to keep them together. I, maybe that's because they forgot they got married. I don't know. Just my little joke there. I'm not saying that you're going to forget you're going to get married and all that kind of like fun stuff and all the rest of it. <sighs> but never mind. You know, it's late. What the hell? I, mean, I can talk rubbish as well if I want. Never mind. Lovely. Lovely. Beautiful cup signs in the force between the two of you. This is mutual love. This is like the peak or the pinnacle. It's a very youthful love as well. Okay, this is a this is a, a young female significator. We've got representing the love between the two of you, and it is love there. Okay, this is someone who does love you. You got a great foundation there. You really have. Your side of the reading, first and foremost, you're willing to make some sacrifices. I think that's beautiful. You're actually willing to do that. That's a long-term thing. That's an attitude you might have to carry on taking. And also reiterate the fact that you, you, know, you are in love and all that kind of cool stuff. Why have I got this feeling of having oppression and negativity taken away from you? Why have I got that? Something negative is being taken away at this time in your life. A feeling of freedom is coming. His side of things bit of a different message. He feels very closely intertwined with you. The High Priestess is the character in, uh, within the social hierarchy of some Earth Worship groups who holds the whole group together. So it's speaking about social binding. You've got lots of Goddess imagery in this reading. Okay, lots of it. And it must be some kind of like real like emotional body. This guy loves you. And this is so cool. Okay. Uh, he's also got his own issues to overcome. But this is in the past. Okay, he can get a bit, he likes, he wants to be the one in charge in the relationship. But I also feel he's got to grow beyond that. So there's still a feeling of some tension in the early part of the, of the actual relationship itself. But the progression, I mean, man, this is it, so romantic. All right, short-term future, pure and perfect loving signs. You're looking very good there within the first three months. I'd include your honeymoon. Don't go too heavy on the meat. I'm telling you, it's not, you know, bad heads, you know what I mean? Okay, progression after that, okay? A nice, calm, intellectually driven and controlled relationship in which you can both take a leading role, okay? So I feel that is very much, you know, two people getting together as one flesh. But more science relating to study. The Hermit card does sometimes speak about isolation, but I don't think... I mean, this is so good so far. Why would we have a sense of isolation or separation here? Because it's not talking about isolation or separation. The Hermit is someone who is searching for wisdom. Searching for some kind of, like, special goal at the end. You know, that proverbial pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, okay? And I think that just symbolizes where you've, been, where you've both been. There's something about this which suggests you've both had very bad issues in the past and you've had to overcome them. I'm not going to say what they are, but I just feel like difficulties and issues and things holding you back. That's why we've got the sense of freedom from oppression on your side of things, um, growing free from resentments on his side of things, and learning to build a relationship where you can be purely mutually in control. Which is going to be difficult because there's always some kind of power play that goes on in a, in a relationship. But you're okay. You really are okay. What are you worried about? What do you need to call a tarot reader for? <laughs> You're going to be fine. Chimp Angel. Okay, you got yourself some work sorted out. That's so cool. Okay, let's have a quick look. You're concerned about harassment in the workplace. Always remember that just because something happened in the past doesn't mean to say it's going to happen in the future. That's something I've got to remember as well because like, we're all growing and developing already. That means you, that means me, that means all of us. Okay, let's have a quick look. Chronological spread, looking at the whole situation to do with you in the workplace. Okay, I'll show you the cards. What the hell? It's okay, going to be so cool. Negativity in the short-term future. Okay, the first two cards, short-term future part of the reading. There's signs of joy and celebration in the early part of the whole thing, but, you know, that's quite common when you start a new job. There is some issues going on there. I don't think it's bullying or harassment. There's a sense of there being some individuals trying to um, exert themselves, I suppose, would be the appropriate word. But I don't... I just don't... It just doesn't feel, to me, like too negative. The only strain there is the fact you've got to work hard, really. Okay? Okay, progression there onwards. Where's negativity here? Passion. This is work you enjoy. It's work that you're like designed to do. More signs of pleasure. That's okay. A sense. Oh, that is interesting. A sense of progression. Okay. 
this is not the end of your career line. You're not going to be stuck there forever. Okay, give it a couple of years, and you'll be doing very well for yourself. And keep the passion as far as the job's concerned. I'm happy with this. Okay, really. so that one's looking pretty cool. On with the next one of today. E job S seventeen. Your first ever tarot reading. Okay. Well, let me be the one to enjoy being the one who pops your cherry, so to speak. Well, only as far as tarot is concerned, okay? <laughs> uh, throwing in a bit of innuendo always makes everybody happy. But, you know, if I did actually script this, okay, and I saw some innuendo in the script, I would whip it out. <laughs> what is wrong with me today? Anyway, on with the show. Let's have a quick look. You want to look more generally, we'll do a Celtic Cross, okay? So let's have a quick look and see what the Celtic Cross is saying for you in the here and now. As is traditional, I have not primed the cards, I've just shuffled like a lunatic, and we'll just see basically what's coming through for you. Okay, right, you know the score. Signs for yourself, awareness, conscious, subconscious, reflection upon the past, anticipation of the future, progression, short term, mid term, long term, and something unexpected. Right. Okay, you've been through a lot of changes. Some of your fear about the future is because of the past, like with many of my inquiries. You've got money on the mind at the moment, and also you're a very stable person when you're dealing with other people. So essentially, other people see you as being something you don't think that you are. Namely, someone who is actually well-grounded, very wise, and intelligent. Subconsciously, you want to be able to generate a sense of balance and equilibrium, but you've got some regrets about the past, but you're still looking forward to the future with some hope. Consciously speaking, okay, um, you're aware of the need for the, there being further changes and something interesting is happening in your future without the shadow of a doubt because you're already aware of it and something good is just there. I just feel it, okay. So you're taking a negativity, turning it into something positive. We had a similar message coming out with previous readings. Reflection upon the past, that's not looking very good at all. I don't know what it was, but something dark was happening there. Possibly... Wait a second. You said in your question that you're going through a dark patch. No, I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. I think you've been through a bad patch. You're creating changes here to bring about further stability. There's a second meaning to this particular reading. Maybe that's why I was coming out with ideas about double entendres, if you get my drift. Because there's a double meaning to this reading. Gosh, why didn't I see that before? Okay, so your conscious awareness is about taking things which are negative, turning them into something positive. Use the learning you've gained through this negative time. Not just the feeling of depression and anxiety and frustration. And oh my god, the world's coming to an end. That's not learning. The learning is the fact that you get through it and the sun gets up the next day, okay? Always. And also that you, with your extra willpower, you're the one who can create changes. You're the one who brings everything about. So don't forget that. And as far as financial signs are, are concerned, you're going to start to make something good happen there. A lot of the message here is very material. But there's also a feeling of, of so, social or family associated with it. You're starting to develop some optimism. Thank the Lord. And I think you're starting to think that the future is going to be slightly rosier, but not quite where you want it to be uh, by this particular time in your life. But I wouldn't worry about that. That's why the signs are reversed there. Okay, completion and wholeness and all the rest of that, but you're not quite there yet. All right, so you already know the answer to this reading, don't you? You know, it's going to be more hard work before things start working out okay. Now, let's have a quick look. Short term, still struggling, okay? That same sense of oppression we had before. Saturnian signs, but lighter colors. Started out dark there, gone through change, lighter colors. Still your own effort, hard work. That's why we got the material world signs, because you're putting in the labor. Progression from there forward. You being... Ooh, you're going to be well respected within, within, definitely within a year from now. Very well respected for something. What is this to do with? Material world. Material success? Hmm. Not necessarily, just a question of doing okay for yourself. The unexpected part of the reading, something miraculous occurring. Something else will be coming into your life, not as a result of your own willpower, that will help a hell of a lot. And then a sense of there being even more wisdom. The same wisdom we were talking about over there, and helping other people. Wow! Some kind of helping, oh, almost like helping profession. I'm seeing you in some kind of like care position or something like that. Or maybe just being a counsellor or just being there for your friends and your family in a different way. That's the kind of feeling I'm getting because you've actually learned and you can do more stuff now. This isn't a negative reading. It's talking about you getting stronger as an individual. This is so beautiful. We've had so many beautiful readings today. It's too cool. Right, there we go. Yet another positive tarot reading coming out for you today. And I went into that in a reasonable depth so you can see how a tarot reading can be done by a good person. Hey, if you get my drift. So, hope you enjoyed that. And I'm glad you can now see the way that some of the messages and meanings can actually come through in a good reading. Fred7038, here we go. 
Ah, you want to know if you'll find love again. Okay, finding love is difficult, finding a relationship can be okay, finding a partner can be okay, but actually finding love can be very hard. So let's have a quick look for you. Well, do you want the good news first or the bad news? Hmm? Which is it going to be today? Well, the bad news is I'm not seeing it happening immediately. But that's as bad as it gets. Okay, it's another message of a slow, steady, developing situation for you. And this one's going to be a bit of a winding road, but it's going to happen. Your love future is not coming to an end. It's starting. But the reading is suggesting to me, and I think you can start to see this, when you look at some of the energies here, for those of you who are quite skilled tarot readers, for those of you who already know the symbolism of the tarot, look at the progression from short term. Take, take into account the question and the message of the question. Why would the hermit be turning up now? Desperately seeking something and a feeling of solitude. But the hermit is also holding a lantern. You can see your way in the darkness, but you just don't know it yet. Okay. The rest of the progression there, yeah, sure, you got some issues or resentments or bitterness or blaming other people or blaming yourself for what's happened in the past. Fine, these things occur. Then there's a sense of settling down, clearing your mind, getting a bit of perspective, a sense of regaining that sense of fun and pleasure, okay? But also thinking that it's quite artificial because you've got that fun and pleasure but you're not quite there yet. And there's some anxiety about that. But on the other hand, boom, we got a sense of there being joy and love at the end of it. So, what does that mean to you? Come on, what does that mean to you? Something good. It's just a bit of a journey to get there, that's all. Do have hope, but do realize that you've got to go through a few changes first. You're in a bit of a pit at the moment. Go through a few changes, and the final result, I believe, very strongly is going to happen for you. All right, Zetioch, totally general readings. Be better if you were to get on the phone with me, okay? There's links down below. You can use them. Let's have a quick look and see what's going to come through for you, okay? You spoke of, like, um, getting over issues from the past. You've got to think to yourself, is a reading the best way of doing it? Let's have a quick look and see basically what's coming through for you. Bear with me two shakes of a lamb's tail. Here we go. Okay, first signs we got there for you. Part of your solution is through learning to put some of these things behind you. And the way that you can do that is to be obsessed with other things. To accept that the past is not there in the present. Build yourself up a list of all the things you are truly grateful for. Food on your plate, roof over your head, clothes on your back, little things like that. And then we got the sense of there being some new beginnings. The Fool often comes before the Magician card in some, um, some tarot symbolism sequences. And then following that, things are getting quite interesting as well. Once you've learned the perspective, you've started to see the new beginnings occurring. Then there's a sense of caution, learning to develop that objective perspective, followed by bringing about a sense of power and stability for you again. Okay. So there is something interesting happening there for you, and it will happen. But a change or alteration in your attitude will probably be the most important thing you can do. Okay. Now those are the readings for today. I've got a few more to do, a bit of a backlog there. I can't answer every single question. Bear in mind also, if you'd like to you know, work for me, there's going to be a link below. If you want to have three free minutes and you're new to the system, there's a link for that as well. Okay. Uh, and a few other cool things down in the information box beneath this particular video. So I strongly recommend you check that out. I'll reiterate again that the tarot reading, no matter what, is still legally required, re legally regarded <laughs> as an entertainment service for very good reasons. And because you are the producer, director, and all the rest of that of the movie of your life. And you must not forget that under any circumstances, okay? Hmm? Subscribe to the channel. Rate and comment. With all requests have to be by private message otherwise you're not added to the rotor okay get that get that straight through okay uh, make friends with the channel have fun you know relax and i look forward to seeing you again on the next delightful nick dutch tarot show speak to you in a while keep cool